Well, after a whole morning of stuffing around, <laughs> lights, camera, brand new audio equipment, and the dream that we've had since lunchtime. It is finally here. Wed it talk. is finally here. Wed, Wed talk is Wed finally talk is here. Up and about. So I think we cra- we thought about this idea, what, last week? Yeah, like a week and a half ago. We talked about um, having a podcast for a while, but. Yeah, we weren't kind of sure what have a rabbit hole we are going to go down with it. Um, there's, and then, there's so many podcasts out there now. There's though. so many podcasts. Everyone listens to a podcast on the way to work. Um, and we were just basically like, we want to create one, but we also want to make it engaging and not just a podcast. Yeah. So, like there's, um, uh, I've, I've listened, there's a few, well, there's two actually, po- wedding podcasts and stuff that I listen to, but they're like, they're both good. Like they're both like very insightful and very educational. But I was like, oh, maybe we can make one where it's like, it's about the people whose work they do, but then it's also just like about them as well. Yeah. It's like you listen to other podcasts where, you know, they interview like athletes and it's all about like their game but you don't know anything about them. And this industry is very much like a person of the personality of the person that you're hiring as you're like your vendor, your photographer, your videographer, your celebrant, whatever it is. So it's like, oh, if we can just chat shit with people and have fun and create some networks. And then if couples or people that like are like us that want to learn more, want to listen, then they can learn from it as well. Or they can just get to know like if someone books us as dual pixel, but they've only seen us, work at a wedding but they've never spoken to us they can listen to an episode and be like all right these guys sound cool this guy sounds like a dickhead um and then they can make their mind up from there and then they might, they might get to know us and feel like they know us before we rock up yes yeah. likewise for everybody else that we 100%. Have and i think there's not many wedding podcasts out there that um like we are obviously in the pho- photography and videography space but there's not many podcasts out there that uh i would say dedicated to couples um, there are a few yeah. out there that are, you know, in America and, and that sort of thing that revolve around mainly the bride, mm. um, but don't really go into potentially other, um, like aspects, like, of, the yeah, day. aspects of the day, yeah, yeah. vendors, that kind of thing. It's more around, you know, just like the dress and all the little and bits. And I don't have the state stuff like, like we talk about in like general business all the time, but I don't think the state stuff correlates to over here like the way that they go about weddings and the way that they're styled and you know they have like monstrous bridal parties and Mm. they go all out like i feel like australian weddings and stuff is a little bit more like oh not less fuss but it's very like main it's less dramatic yeah it's less dramatic like we're we're there to like have a good time and like celebrate with people and they do it the same, but they just do it on another level. So like those podcasts might not necessarily resonate. Like when we listen to business things and it's like, you know, oh, we do this in the States or this business model, that business model, like it doesn't tie over no. as much. Whereas hopefully this, because obviously we're Australian and our market is couples in Melbourne and hopefully eventually interstate as well, that it can kind of resonate and it makes sense. Like it's relatable. Yep. No, hundred percent. And I think like, in terms of just us, we listen to a lot of business podcasts and there aren't many that are, say, kind of relate to us on kind of a local service-based level. Yeah. They're more, you know, big corp, um, you know, they might be finance podcasts or anything like that. And it hasn't. it's only been until recently where we've found a kind of a few, um, more like relatable. Frankie Lee and all that sort of stuff where they're actually interviewing real people yeah. that um, don't have – billion dollar businesses like they're you know just like you and me who are trying to build something from scratch yeah um you know they're in the suburbs um and yeah they're just kind of trying to find their way exactly like we are so and there's not many like that so this podcast i think will delve into all aspects of what we do whether it's it is you know business um, but the main focus will be obviously around couples and how yeah. they can best serve, you know, their day. Cause that's obviously what the podcast is about is wed talk. So yeah, exactly. Um, all it's things all about weddings. weddings. So yeah. you will hear different aspects and there will be some podcasts that, you know, people might not be interested in, but we hope everyone that does listen is mm-hmm. interested in all aspects of what we do. Um, but if not, there's obviously just going to be certain episodes that are, you know, based around whether it's just photography or just video or, yeah. Um, certain aspects it might just be just about wedding cakes a whole episode around wedding cakes like that's just uh how it could end up so um yeah we've kind of got just a very small vision for this podcast to start and i think it's just going to grow from there as we adapt and um find out organically do its own thing don't push it it's just fun like everything we talk about nine times out of ten is like business this business that how's this going to work how's that going to work so i think this would be good for us just to 
like whether yeah, it's once get back a week. on that client level. Yeah, get back on the client. Like talk to more people, get other people's insight on things, and yeah, just just have a little bit of fun. And because it is a very, as much as it's on a wedding day, it's like you know, there's a party aspect to it. Like it's very serious. Like you're there to do a job, and if you stuff it up, like it's a big stuff up. Yep. Um, whereas this might just take like that fun, bring more fun back into it. And we yep. can just, you know, chat to people. And 100%. Because I but, think in a um, in a wedding season, like you can get kind of hyper-focused on just the deliverables oh, of yeah. going to a wedding, shooting it, and then, you know, we might have three back-to-back like we do next month. Like um, it's just you can kind of get sucked into basically just – Shooting. Your routine, like you're just routinely just doing these things and, um, you know, at the end of the day for us, it comes down to how well can we deliver that client experience. Yeah. Um, it's more than just like the service that you provide. It's like what you, like from what I've heard from people back in the day, it's like, oh, you know, the guy rocked up with the camcorder and sat in the middle and just sat there and filmed like that was your wedding video. Now it's like, it's nuts. Like people do over multiple days and they've got different highlight films and there's like, interviews and it's documentary style. Like it's not just a, a one song for three minutes with like clips of the day over it. Like it's the industry's going nuts at the moment. So it's like hundred percent. Yeah. Just, and it's like us with like, you know, we just come up with an idea today and, you know, hopefully this idea will get pushed out to um, what we do, but um, we always come out with the ideas. There's always, there's so much technology coming into weddings now that, um, you know, it, compared to two years ago where you know, during COVID it was just all about live streams and live streaming isn't really a big part anymore because people are now you know, going back to um, the regular yeah. um, type wedding. Cool. Um, and yeah, it's just, there's so many little intricacies that are coming in, whether it's um, you know, handmade or DIY items that there's a lot more like you who mm. are going, having their own weddings on their own properties um, doing more of the planning instead of leaving it up. Yeah, like, and I think the venues as well, like we'll, we'll dive into venues eventually on an episode, but just the staff shortages just around venues yeah. is making it less desirable for couples in terms of their client experience with mm. vendors, uh, sorry, venues, um, and, you know, what's their experience like with these, you know, high up venues that they actually don't know who they're going to get on the day. Yeah. Um, and that's a really big thing and just with all the technology they it's coming into play now. Like we're just going to come up with an idea that hopefully will get shared. Um, but we see that as a potential thing. We're not sure. Could hit, could miss, but as long as we're trying things and, you know, but even like, some, as long as something hits. then Like on that, like the technology side of it, like we think back and we started, what, 2009, 19, 19? I think we were. Yeah, it was when, it, when the, the ball got rolling. And like back then we were in completely different worlds. Like I was a builder. You're obviously working for Lexus in the marketing side of things. And like for me to think, okay, going from, you know, working on site for what close to eight to 10 years, like since I was 15 um, to come into this now, like to make that, to make that switch. And then from when we started, like we're around weddings and just photo video in general to like what it is now, like it's changed so much. Like I think Mm. COVID changed heaps. Yep. Um, and that's what I was saying before, like storytelling was like videos now aren't just montages and compilations of the day there because I think COVID kind of made everybody realize that like there's more, you missed out on so much and mm. then they want to capture so much more. And, they, and you know, like COVID is COVID couples that met and had to like be forced to move in with each other throughout then or couldn't see each other, or couldn't see family, couldn't see friends. Like they just want to have that overall finished film. Uh, I guess the film as opposed to video, but like the film side of things, like so much bigger and so much grander. Like when, um, like when we started way back, like we started first off with a shoot for a bridal company. Mm. That was like our way in to the market. Like what was it? Miss Bella Bridal Miss Bella, Bella is where Bridal we started. In Bro now. Yeah. Shout out to them if they're, yeah, if they have <laughs> they're listening or someone's getting a cheers. dress from there. They're cheers, Julie. Really. Thanks, thanks, yeah. for the, thanks for the start. But no. like we went all out on that start. Yep. We hired like we was in like some mansion house in in Harkaway. I won't say which one it was, but we got like the Vogue. Yeah, from the Range Rover Vogue. Yeah, they, and I was able to kind of scrounge together, but yeah, we we're able to get that, which is you know I hate to talk about money and stuff, but like that's a nearly a three hundred thousand dollar car. Yeah, it's a and for that to get it as our first shoot, like we didn't actually use it that much to be honest. No, like we we're, got like like we're, actually, we're using the house. Yeah, we got one um, shot of it coming. We use the house car. more than the actual car. 
Um, but just the opportunity from our um, our network that we did have, we were able to get our start that way. Yeah. Um, and we were able to turn up for Miss Bella Bridal and obviously shoot, you know, quite a bit of um, – Oh, we're just doing photography. I think we, we oh, mainly did that. No, we did. We did both. I think we did a little bit of video. We wanted to pack it, so that's when we. So originally, like to go back again, like when we started. So for us to go back, like we played footy together yep. uh, for a season in like under nineteens or something. Um, George's brother was the coach, and we were low on players, so <laughs> hence the thing. Um, and we both kind of like. Connected over um, to both D supporters. So we're really out there, D supporters. Well done. Um, we'll give you a discount. But uh, <laughs> so that's what we started with. And then like we kind of faded over the years. And then um, I think you posted something with, uh, I think it was like a wrap up video that you might have done for Lexus. And it was video based. And I just started doing photos. And I was like, oh, I want to just catch up. Um, Go to the city. I think we walked yeah, around and we were shot in the city for like we went to for the, the city. day. Like if you look, there might be, I don't know if you Google us, there potentially would be like our old logo, our old website yeah. and it was red and it was blue because yeah. we were Melbourne yeah, supporters yeah. and we were like, oh, yeah, we'll go with the Melbourne, the, you know, the, the Melbourne navy blue theme. and the red. And we're trying to literally sell weddings and then we went from into weddings with a, I think it was a navy and gold like colour yeah. scheme. Yeah, it was. Um and then from there, we've developed it obviously into our minimal style that we have now over yeah. a few years. But when we started out, yeah, we, we literally went into the city one day. We connected and we're like, mm. oh, yeah, we'll go shoot some stuff. Got the train up in the yeah. city. Yeah, that's right. Because we were trying to get it up. We get some shots of the G before we got in trouble. Yeah, we were yeah, already like, like I wanted first. to get it up. We're literally flying it over the Yarra River. Yeah, it looked good. Um, it was a good shot. And I was literally just looking around, like, like waiting for someone from, you know, <laughs> I don't know, the council or parking yeah, inspector or whatever come to come over and go, hey, boys, what are you doing? Um, we don't actually use that footage anymore. I think I've still got it. So it's it's somewhere. Get, like an airspace warning or something. Like, you know, yeah. DJI put the thing up, like you can't fly here. Because this was 2019. Like drones were, say big, but they weren't as big as they are today yeah. in terms of people flying them. Yeah. responsibly it's terrible now. But um, And the laws and back stuff then, around drones. Like, back then the drone laws were – um, and they still are, uh, not, not much has changed, but in terms of, you know, your drone has to be registered. Yeah. Mm. You've got like that, we're under that two kilo kind of I limit. Feel like, I feel like back then if you had a drone, everyone just thought you were like trying to spy on people. Yeah. Like if you had a drone, up, like I remember early days, maybe not even that, but maybe like real estate and bits are like, we would fly a drone and someone would come out and be like, oh, you're trying to look in my backyard. Yeah. Like, Mate, I'm exactly. just here to do my job and go home. Like yeah. we're, not, we're not trying to like spy on people. Like, well, when I there were people doing that. House. And that's what, yeah, that's what was kind of it puts a stigma on drone photography now that's why we've had our issues with certain venues with neighbors and that sort of thing oh. <laughs> i'm sure we can get there's so yeah. many stories that we have that we could get into um well, basically these guys just trying to shoot a drone down yeah, yeah um next door to a very popular yarra valley venue yeah, yeah we won't, <laughs> um won't, 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 the won't venue. disclose the venue but it might be, also, how they get along might with be that, a bad that idea to, to do it so then that way like somebody else doesn't lose a drone from, yeah oh mate any shotgun exactly. but but yeah basically, i still have my drone yeah let's yeah, yeah no. but yeah in terms of the drone laws around it like back then there were laws but you know kind of everyone thought you were just flying around and the ones that could fly it had some sort of skill mm. in that yeah. Know, whereas now, you go know, down to JB Hi-Fi, buy one for 500 bucks. The camera's probably going to be no good and that's why you hire us for your wedding. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, so you've got a cheap drone, you fly it up and, you know, it connects and then, you know, you know, got all fly back buttons and there's certain brands mm. um, that, you know, can make, make it safe. But there are people that do put a bad stigma on that just industry yeah. as a whole, like even just that aspect of photography and videos, like people just hooning around drones and stuff. Mm. Um I think it's it's not as bad. Like even if we, um, like yeah, that's our that's our drone tangent. But like back back on back onto where back we onto were. our introduction. Back on yeah to to how it all started. So yeah, so we uh, we caught up. We're flying in the drone in the city. Um, we got some shots there, and I think it was that. I'm pretty sure it was like I don't know if it was that night or oh, within a few days. But that's when we're like, oh, all right, like should we give this? Should we give this a shot? Because I remember we're going back and forth trying to pick a name, mm. and we're like, well, "How the fuck are we going to pick a name?" Like, um, and then yeah, we I think you threw out Jewel Pixel because it was two of us, and it was like yeah. camera related. I was, 
I think we were both chucking up names. I'm trying to remember what kind of names. I we remember where we were. I was sitting on the couch. To, yeah. Do you remember any names that we spat together? I can't remember that. Oh, that no. Nah. I, I remember when you sent the logo through when we decided, because with your graphic background, like you created the first mm. few logos and there was like the D and the the D and the P in one and then it was separated and there was like one was red, one was blue and contrasting background colors and everything. But yeah, I was sitting on the house in, in that house in Berwick emergency had come when the tree fell through the other house but that's a story for another day um but yeah i think that's when we decided to like launch dual pixel we did the standard thing we put the thing like oh game changes coming and like we're gonna change the industry <laughs> change all this sort of stuff and i was like all the hype around yeah. the video and stuff and then when you're creating a your business is you're like you're so pumped to get it out yeah there. exactly but the actual idea of it it's oh. like you gotta find like you can, there's so much work and t- to get to, go, to that point exactly right but even like so we we got that done and then it, then it was like the logistics of sorting out like how two people go about running one business. We can go over that later on. But there was yeah. like that was a conversation that came up a few times like how we're going to sort that out. Um, Who gets and, paid what and what are the legalities yeah, around, exactly. you know, like everything because it is – it's a very different business. It, it's easily set up like it's a more easy system how it's set up now and I'm sure we can dive into it in a separate episode but – when you first start a business with someone else, it's not all on you. Yeah. You don't, you know, you're not covering, you know, all the expenses yourself. Like everything gets split in half. So there's yeah. pros and cons to both and how you set that up. Um, and yeah, we, we dealt with that initially. Mm-hmm. Um, and it took us a while just to even like get accountants and all that sort of yeah. stuff intact. And but it, that whole introductory phase was. I think it was good. It's worked actually well for us in a sense. Like, so basically after we decided to go ahead with it all, um, we moved to being a company and we did all that sort of back end stuff. That was basically when that happened is when COVID came. Mm. So we did that styled shoot. We took some photos, made some, you made some brochures up. We were cheap as we're like two and a half grand for like a whole day photo and video. Yeah. Um, which Ransom. was like, and <laughs> now we look back and we're like, that's why we got so many leads. And when we yeah. first started, we were just like, Wow, we're getting so many bookings. Yeah, it's and like, like and we 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 soon realized after these weddings were that we're shooting, you yeah. know, twelve months out. Um, you know, why people love to pay that price. Yeah. But when we first started, we had no idea. It was like, what do you charge when exactly you're starting right. off? And I think the industry back then as well, compared to like how I see it now, is I f- maybe this is just like photography and video in general, but pricing was like a very uh, Taboo. yeah, like you, no one talked about how much they charge for things. Like you, if you wanted to find out how much someone else charged, you, you had to like, to like inquire download. with them to, and pretend to be a couple to like get their thing and go. I don't think we ever did that. I think we just sort of like thought roughly like how much we'd be happy to get paid on a day to do what we had to do as like with the experience level that we had. And then we moved from there. But so we, we had that pricing. Um, we put it out there. You ran some ads on it. That's when Facebook ads were hot as. Yeah. So we got a few bookings in and then like COVID just came and just like just stopped it all yep. completely. So, but that worked. It worked in our favor, I think, because the we, other side of the business, like yeah. real estate, like it worked really, really well. Weddings, I think initially this, sh- it, it was shock factor there. It was Everyone was scared had, not knowing what's going to happen. Yeah. And we still had our full-time jobs as well. So we weren't in like, so we weren't full-time wedding photographers and videographers like at that point. So we still had like money to make and we still had jobs that like I was building so I could still build and you could still run and do your stuff with Lexus. So it wasn't like, oh no, what are we going to do in regards of like for money? Um, but it did help with the real estate side of things like because, you know, you had to work from home so we could put so much more time into it. Yeah. And you actually went, Full time earlier than I did, you yeah. Know, six months earlier than me. Um, so, but I think we were trying to buy, looking to try and buy houses, like saving yeah, to do well, the house thing at the same time. We were time, in a so. really interesting time period because during COVID, I'd just met my now wife, Amy, mm. and, um, you know, going through COVID, like we'd already set up the company. I think we were shot a few weddings we'd before done a, we'd done I a met couple, her. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, like we we're going into a really interesting time of our lives where we were going from those early twenties into those mid to late now twenties. But yeah. um, you know, thinking about you know house purchases and all this sort of stuff. And if anyone's in business, you know how hard it is to get a property when oh, you when sucks. you've got a business compared to so you could be working in a job for three months and get 
a way bigger loan than any business yeah. owner, no matter how much money that business owner is earning. And it was COVID as well. So like the restrictions were like all over the shop. So we had all that going on. Plus we were trying to do the, the, um, the company side of it as well. And then COVID times were quiet, like um, weddings wise, like I said, real estate's the other side mm. of our business that helped it out a heap. But then once COVID got to the point where everyone was like, oh, fuck COVID. Like I'm sick of these lockdowns. I'm sick of missing out on things and the rules constantly changing. Like once that came, like the the boom that came after was crazy. Like we put in perspective, we did like probably four weddings, four four to six weddings that first caught first year would have been. Before COVID. Yeah. Before COVID, yeah. Like it was like that first half before Shit hit the fan. Yeah, pretty much. So we did like four to six and then the next year we, we went straight to 40. Like from four to six to 40 in 12 months and that was last year was yep. the 40-year. So at 100x <clears throat> our yeah, business, exactly. business essentially. But because we were, as we said, we were at that lower price point, like that's where the massive influx of mm. weddings came from. Um, I think people were trying to get in because it, for us it went up, the bookings went up and then it kind of like – plateaued because we hadn't done heaps of advertising and then we had our first year and then we had all these influx come in and then like winter came and then we, this our first was kind of winter and we learned that like, oh, okay, people don't really book weddings in winter because people get kind of engaged in the warmer spring months. If people go overseas, they might, but yeah. it very rarely, like you get a heap, or for us anyway, got a heap of inquiry at that point through winter. Um, so then it jumping like I mean, that four to 40 and it was up and then it was down and then we tweaked like that first year was such a learning curve. Like we went from that low pricing point, then we jumped up to where we were good. Then we went to like, we tried like stupidly high and realized that we probably weren't there yet. And that's when all of our inquiries and stuff dropped off. Then we brought it back down. Then we like readjusted our pricing and like the first, we that probably first changed year. changed our prices a good 10 oh, plus yeah. times. But it was just like, we, I think it was also like because – that first wave was so big <clears throat> that we thought that anything we were doing price, our pricing was basically pre- like contradicting like the bookings we were getting. Um, so that was a hard thing because we'd have it at one price and then we'd get heaps of inquiry. Then we put it up because the work was starting to come in and then it would drop down. And then it, it was just like, we were trying to, I don't know. It was like trying to, it was like trying to bet on the market when it's hot. Yep. And then you change it and it drops and you, you like get on it right at the end and then it, and it comes back down again. It's, like, it's literally like gambling to a degree because mm. you don't know and no one knows. It's like anything in business. Like you, until you start doing something mm. and you start seeing the results, you don't know what actually works. Yeah. And so you can, every, anyone can have ideas and stuff, but until you actually start putting either some money out for advertising or you delve into a different kind of avenue, then yeah. you actually don't what know what you can offer to the yeah, next person. Exactly. So, I think um, in terms of where we were sitting at in terms of price, um, like, yeah, we did, we were just trying to find what worked and we thought when we started and we didn't know where to start and we're like, we just chucked out literally just a number. We're like, okay, it was this two and a half grand for everything. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> at the first wedding season that we did do, mm. we realized, well, like Weddings are a tough day oh, yeah. on the feet. Yeah. And just in general. Just like, in general. Like they're just a big, big day. And then from there, that's when we started shifting our pricing. Mm. So, um, and that's why it's kind of reflective of what it is today. And yeah. we've got that experience and all that sort of stuff. Like, yes, we had come from video and photo backgrounds kind of anyway, mm. learning the skill. Um, but Business we had never done weddings before. Yeah. Um, so delving into that, that's why we had to start on the cheap, mm. as everyone does. I think we even did one borderline free, I think, just I to think get so. like that yeah. experience. Um, and I think everyone does, like if, to anyone out there, if you're looking to dive into anything, like just go do something for free and see if you like it. And it takes um, the pressure off, like yeah. the pressure of expectation as well of like, okay, like this person's paying me X amount of dollars for something that I'm not 100% sure in. Would you prefer to do two of them and do them for free and have have a little bit more leniency on yourself for the outcome and obviously then the person knowing like your skill level. I mean, like you have to make that abundantly clear. Can't just say, yeah, I'm a five-star wedding photographer. I'm going to do it for free. I'm going to do it for 500 bucks and they're expecting this and you deliver something else. Yeah. Um, 
but you're just knowing like going into it with as least amount of pressure and as open mind as possible, shoot it, see how long it takes you to turn it around, see if you can make your own style, like see if the couples are happy with it in the first place. If they ask them for honest feedback, like did you miss anything? Is there something else? like just dive into it in that space without the money? Opponent could touch to it and then bring that in later, like once you once you come forward. But yeah, yeah, it's just yeah, it's just one of those things where you just gotta make sure make sure of it all at the start. And that, that's the same. That's what we did. Like I remember, I think it might've even been oh, one of the ones that started this year talking about like how we, from that start to now, like how all, when we were starting, like the, what a wedding day takes out of you. Like people just think you just take photos and videos and it just chill as, and there is that aspect to it. But like, I remember it was a hot day mm. and I said to you, I was like, I would, I would go and frame <laughs> like in 35 degree heat with no cover. I would have preferred to frame that day on site than I would to shoot the wedding. Cause I was just sweating buckets. Yeah. Like it was ridiculous. And you've got, you got to- no time for rest because events are happening. Like you've got, you know, Go, you go either straight into ceremony or from ceremony straight into family photos, then straight into portraits. their portrait session. And you're on this like really strict timeline. Like it's mm-hmm. not like you can stop and go, hey, let's have a break. Like it, it's borderline up to the couple like, yeah, exactly. when you're going right. to go. Like they might go, like I think we remember asking that couple, like um, do you want to stop and have a drink for 10 or do you want to just like go and get it done and then come back so you're out of the heat? Like you got to kind of make sure that, you know, you, you know, you're like, staying focused like whether you're drinking or like I, I put bags of lollies and stuff in my camera bag or bring water or whatever it might be that you're focused plus like you've got a, a couple like if you got so if you're doing family photos like you've got like your list but you've got like maybe 60 people that you got to entertain and, and keep in and make sure you stay on track and you don't doze off because you know you're sweating buckets and whatnot and then after that you got the bridal party who are just getting stuck into drinks because they're just keen to get around it so you got to make sure that you got like then you go to like fourteen people, but not, sometimes that fourteen people is harder to manage than that manage than that sixty people because they're all just like like looking at you for direction, and if you're not on a hundred percent, then it just shows like straight away. So you got to like read the couple, read the bridal party, make sure that if you're stuffed, you're not showing your stuff, or if you're like just going blank because so much going on that you don't show it. So it's just like so much more that we had no idea about at the start. Like I mm. thought I'd just rock up, take some photos, chill out, have a beer after. Yep. And yeah, it's just so much more to it than that. Yeah. And I think for me, like I hadn't been really too many weddings. Yeah, neither. Uh, individually. So I like I kind of had an idea of how it all kind of runs, but it wasn't until we did those first few. It was like a mm. real massive learning experience. And I remember like we will basically just – those first few, we were just like stressed out of our minds going, mm. what's going on? Do we miss everything? Especially on the video side where – and for, like it happens with photography as well, but just that redundant side of like is everything backed up? Is everything good? Yeah, like get lost? all the audio. Have, is is all the audio go? good? Is all the, you know, is all the cameras good? Are they in the right positions? Mm. All this sort of stuff that now we don't even think of. Like it's just yeah. second nature. Yeah. But when we're first starting, it's just like this whole learning curve. And the worst thing you want to happen is you don't press record or you miss a really important photo in a ceremony, Mm. which, you know, unfortunately does happen. Yeah. Like it just, you know, unfortunately you do have a piece of electronic equipment in your hands and if it doesn't do the thing that it's supposed to do, Mm. then you will miss a moment. So that added pressure of not just shooting photos, being able to shoot on your kind of own schedule Mm. is what adds to the pressure now of weddings and it kind of makes it more interesting for us now because like we like that pressure and we thrive off it. Well, that Um, happened um, a wedding that we had last November last year, I think it was. And I won't say like the couple, but it was hot. Um, It was a hot day and if anyone's listening to that, shoots on a Canon R5, like those things hate the heat. Yep. Hate yeah. it. They overheat very quickly. And I never had the overheating issue before, but um, lucky we're both shooting video and we have backup cameras set for just the ceremony. Uh, we had two of them, plus there was two of us. We had four cameras going, so we're, we're, we're pretty covered. Pretty set, yeah. Um, and I was just shooting B-roll of the ceremony, but they were just about to come back down the aisle, I'm pretty sure. And as I go, the camera just goes, I'm not having a bar <laughs> anymore, like too hot, shuts off. And I was like, fuck, what do I do? And I'm like, look at Geordie. And Geordie's doing his thing. And I'm like checking the cameras. And I went um, and I tried turning it. Sorry, sir, if you tried turning it on and off again. So I tried turning it on and off. <laughs> Chuck it in rise. Yeah. <laughs> and um, turning it on and off again, that didn't 
work and I was like, oh, what do I do? So I just like threw the battery out of it and put a new one in it and the battery was roasting. Like, mm. so I don't think it's just a camera overheating. I think your battery is like your battery gets too hot, your cards get too hot, like the whole thing in general. Like they, they can shoot up to 8K and they've got no like fan These things get hot. Yeah, like they're, they're ridiculous. Like they, hot. they get warm. Um, and depending on what camera you have, like, you know, we've got some black magic stuff now and they've got internal fans and all sorts of stuff. So you can shoot anywhere. You can shoot in the desert. Yeah. But these Canon ones, they're kind of built, um, unfortunately for the consumer market Mm. more than the professional, depending on like what TR you go and how much you pay and all that sort of stuff. But the, the, the really good models that we use, um, they are still a consumer Type yeah, camera, and it was even like though they've got first, the professional aspects to it, yeah, like they, they shoot 8K and all this sort of stuff, and it's more the lens that you're putting on the camera that yeah. makes a difference. But these things get hot, yeah. Like, well, it's like Canon's first mirrorless, high quality, like cinema camera in a in a like say consumer camera. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, bang the thing in it. Um, like I just took the card out, I was like <laughs> blowing on the card <laughs> to try and cool it down, but I and then put it back in, turned it back on, it worked. I don't think I could shoot 50 frames. I think it dropped to like 24, but I could still shoot. Yeah. So anyway, I got the couple coming down the aisle, like everything went smoothly, but I realized it's the first time I'd filmed fully on it. Um, and it was, yeah, it was like 30 odd degrees, but I had, cause I had no gimbal on. Oh, actually, no, I did have a gimbal on, but I had it on like stabilizer on the lens. I had in body stabilization on the camera. I was shooting 50 frames a second, 4k, everything mm. and you know, Canon's got three things but it's like the it's like the middle one um whatever that it's still it still shooting raw shooting log all of that and it was just like they're the things you don't <coughs> you don't learn until you do it like I knew Canon had an overheating problem but I never had the overheating problem yeah. like we've seen then. it like we follow people that do have that big overheating problem mm. um but they're and just to dumb it down for anyone that's not into cameras or anything technical, like mm. basically everyone has a 4K TV now like yeah. in simplest terms. Like everyone has a 4K TV. They used to have a full HD plasma TV back in the day. Even your iPhone shoots 4K. Even your iPhone now shoots 4K. Like the the higher resolution that we shoot mm. is basically the file sizes that come with yeah. that. And storing that onto either an SSD or an SD card mm. is just ginormous. Now. It, like you're looking at potentially a gigabyte sometimes per second, depending on what level yeah, what you're shooting exactly at. Exactly right. So you think that that's going while it's trying to focus on a wedding bride's ring yeah. and the camera is trying to stabilize itself as well simultaneously while download, like recording all this footage to a storage device. Mm. Like these things are going to if your be put not, under pressure. And if your card's not fast enough, like this is something we learned as well. Like if your cards and stuff aren't fast enough, um, your write speed's not enough. Then if you quickly go between stopping, like stopping record and pressing record again, or you stop record quickly and then you take a battery out of it and put it back in, like your files were corrupt. Yep. Like that's something. I, and thankfully, like it didn't happen with anything too serious. But like we've come back and like, oh, why is this, why is this thing not working? Yeah. And so now like back then we wouldn't have known that, but now if we're at a wedding, um, I was shooting one the other day and um, I was, there was one, there was me and there was another guy that um, helps us out, does photos. Um, I said to him like, here, take my camera um, and hit record. And then so that when I had changed the camera out of the main speeches recording camera, that time one, I didn't miss anything, but two, I could like stop, stop pressing record, wait like 20 seconds. And then I, I hit record again and then turned it off quickly so that it started writing a new one. So that was, that wasn't like the main file wasn't the last file, then pop the battery out, then put it back in, set it up, then press record and then jump back on. Whereas, yeah. and other times we would have just like, Oh, <laughs> press record, stop, yeah. press, drop battery out, drop it. And if you think about it, like if they record it, whatever, but if you just recorded like, I think it was the previous file to when I changed the battery was like 17 minutes long. So when you just like stop it, like when you stop record, like it doesn't mean it's finished writing to your card. Like it's still going mm. depending on the file sizing that you use. So it's just bits and pieces like that, that we didn't know over the time that we've come to learn. We've come to learn like now. so much from 
our previous weddings, like we've we've had <laughs> basically near death experiences in terms <laughs> of stress of like, have we lost oh, this yeah. file? Have we don't have this audio? Do we not? We've recovered quite a bit of footage that we thought mm. we didn't have. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think over the time you just learn and you learn the processes of these people that we do follow now mm. um, and other wedding videographers and photographers in the industry of what is the best process. And as we've done more and more weddings with other vendors and stuff, like yeah. you actually see their process and learn a thing or two and they mm. learn a thing or two off us. Yeah. Um, so if you ever see us at a wedding, we're literally like scrambling around that whole time during ceremony and probably during reception too. And if we um, look calm and collected, it's just a front. Yeah, it's just a front. <laughs> I mean, no. It depends when it is. Like if it's during yeah. ceremony that we're pretty – locked in because yeah. we need to be and if unfortunately we're in that front row and we're blocking your view sorry but yeah. we have to be there at the end of the day like they're paying us to get these shots know, to capture every part of their day so we do our best to like not intrude on anyone um but at the end of the day like we've still got a job to, to do. do um and that one second of like we think about it, like you might the Maybe for a median family it might be different, but if you're like just a guest, right? And where you stand there to get one shot, and you're like, "Oh, I didn't see." Um, I think I put oh, the ring on. Put the ring on, or something yeah. like that. It's like if we got in the way and you don't see that, but what if? Think of like what if the couple never sees that? Like what if we never got that shot? Yeah. Or any other sh- important shot like Which that? Which no like, one really thinks of. If no one thinks of, like they're just thinking that like these guys are just rocked up to do a job but they're friends and family and stuff. Which you want to see everything, but at the same time, like if we don't get something. Like the we're going to be the ones that know about it, and yep. we're the ones that it comes back and. And we try to be as less intrusive as we can. I think yeah. that's that differentiates us with most shooters. I think we will try and be more a fly on the wall and use our equipment to our best advantage. Mm. Whether it's you know with different lenses and sort of stuff, where we can be less in the way, so everyone that's there can enjoy the experience. Yeah. Um, and really, you know, be in the moment. Um, yeah. and not have photographers and videographers in the way, so we don't actually go in front of like you'll probably find me if I'm at your wedding like I'm going to be circling the outskirts of the ceremony but um and as like you mm. you might be jumping into um I'm everywhere you're everywhere yeah. like you're going to go in the front you're going to go pretty close to them go behind them mm. go anywhere you want to go to get the best photo because at the end of the day if you look back and think oh that photographer was in the way, then you're not going to think of that. You're going to think like you're going to see an actual photo and be like, wow, that photo looks yeah. great. I'm so glad that way I would to capture that. Yeah. Um, I think no that, one's going to think even a few hours after, oh, the photographer was in the way. Like yeah. you're on to, you know, the, your guests are on to drinking beers and having a good yeah, time. Gonna like, for, you're going to forget about you're gonna, it. Like away. you're going to forget about your ceremony and someone who has gotten married. Um, it's They're just literally it. like a blur. Like I seriously – like we'd shot a few weddings and even at my wedding, like we'd probably had 20 or 30 weddings under our belt. Mm. And I thought I knew how I was going to feel on the day and yeah. how it was all going to go. But it was, you know, some parts were pretty stock standard, but the actual ceremony, that's that that hit completely different because everything just felt like a blur. Yeah, Everything was moving so fast. I didn't even think that there was photographers or videographers there. Like they yeah. marked me up to start, which we normally do as well. But apart from that, that's all I remember from them. Yeah. Um. So I don't know how you know they interacted with guests or anything like that. I never even took well, notice of them. I was just focused on obviously Amy. Mm. And at the end of the day, I just remember kind of bits. Yeah. Like I just remember, you know, the first kiss, the rings, yeah. who brought up the rings, her walking down the aisle. Mm. That is it. I don't remember like yeah. the actual thirty minutes of just talking. Yeah, that that that's also like side noting that as well like I, we had someone inquire and they asked um they're after photos but they're like oh we're interested in video as well like what are you um what are your personal thoughts on it and then like how do other couples um uh, what do they think about their videos and um and from everyone that i've heard that says like should i have video at my wedding um everyone that hasn't got it says they regret it and everyone that got it loves it and like that's coming back to you as 100%. well. Like I we, didn't want video at my wedding. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I'm so glad we did. Yeah, because like we will float around and we'll do all those bits and pieces. But like Jordy was saying, then like he only remembers a few bits and pieces. Like I'm not married. I'm getting married in a week. It could be sooner, depending on when this <laughs> goes Saturday. live. But yeah, next <laughs> Saturday. Um, so I have my idea of how I think things are going to go. But like you were saying, you remember maybe like five or six key moments. Like come off the top of your head 
photos are like photos are really good and there's some really really good like documentary style photographers out there but at the end of the day like the way i explained it to this person that inquired was like you can see a photo of you can have your vow if you've got like vow booklets or anything like you can have your vows written in your vow booklet you can have photos of that vow booklet but if you don't have a video you'll never hear those vows mm-hmm. again and you'll have like nana in the front row that records it on her phone but it's not the same as like getting video and being able to actually remember those moments have like a story relive behind those the day, moments yeah. yeah better and i think that um like i'm not like i said i'm getting married in a week so i'm not sure what i'm gonna remember but we rach pushed me and pushed me to get video and i honestly don't even i think it was because we had so much stuff going on and we spent all our money on our photographer like she's and most people really do. Good. The first yeah. thing I think of is photos. photography. And there's some now, there is inquiries now that we do get that are, um, you know, they just come to us just for video. Yeah. To start, like we're getting a lot of just video only inquiries yeah. now. Um, and that's why we blended the two together because yeah. we found after a while as well, like people were coming to that um, realization that if one company can do both, so, so much, much easier. easier. Yeah. Yeah. So much easier. And that was our whole notion around what, how can we differentiate ourselves coming into the wedding industry where yeah. we can offer both. Um, and, you know, people were skeptical of video to start. They're like, oh, do I want video? I'm not sure. Yeah, will like I the watch The stock it? standard is like we just get our photos um, and that it was normal for a while. And now I think as time rolls on, it'll probably honestly potentially just move even more towards just video. I think so. Like the, the way I think of it is like photos – Photos are good for you every day, right? So like if good you to want frame. To, good to frame. Like have around your house. house. You can have as your wallpaper. Have an album. Um, you know, if you've got family and friends that can't come or, you know, someone wants to show that they're at your wedding, like photos perfect, one hundred percent. But if you have people that are and this comes actually because of live streaming, which is what we we came across before. Um, like through COVID it was big, but now it's dropping off. But like know, we're having live stream at our wedding, which is obviously video based. Um, but just being able to like sit down and watch not might not even be like the the month after, it might not even be a year after. It might be like five years later. You know, your life might have changed significantly. Like, you know, say someone's not around anymore or things have changed, uh, whatever it might be. Like you can sit down and you can rewatch and see like families' reactions and hear your parents speak and do your speeches, like it's I don't know. It's just if you want to tell a story and people's days now, like I said, after COVID, like there's so much more story involved, I think, and the industry is so much more story-based now. Like I, like I would almost say to people like you want your videographer is probably more of a priority than your photographer yep. because you can – like I can see – It's if, easier. You're going to get more captured. Like at the end of the day, yeah. If I, like when taking photos, just some basic simple – photo video knowledge like you are taking photos like you're pressing that shut up per like one shot, one yeah. press it was one photo unless you've got you know the auto shut up and you've got really high shutter speed mm. which you're taking like a maybe 16 shots per second yeah and you can just hold it get down and you can go for your life like you do it on people yeah, do it spray on their phones spray or, and pray spray and pray you just hold it down so like there is some moments like that especially when potentially just walking down the aisle like there will be a potential couple meter gap between one photo and the next photo, mm. depending on who's shooting. Like we obviously shoot a billion photos during that, so we don't yeah. miss everything. But you're always going to have different actions. Like it looks like things are going to change, like your arm will move yeah. or I feel whatever. Like it, but with video, it's rolling. Yeah, you get the like whole you thing. You get the whole thing. So yeah. that in terms of video, to be able to put something together, that's why we can be easily chop the stuff. Even if things don't look good, we'll just chop it out. We'll just mm. use the good part for two or three seconds yeah. and we'll use a different part and blend it all together and blend mm. the story. And I think like, I don't know, I just I just feel like you're just going to get, like when you're not cra- like having a crap on photography because it's obviously something that we offer. <laughs> so that's where really I do. started. <laughs> yeah. And we, we do it as well. But I think like me starting out as the photographer and now moving more into the video space. Into the video space. Um, more of like a, like a hybrid shooter. Like you just like doing video. Um, I started as photography and now I'm going like, well, if I, if someone came to me and said, oh, I want you to do my wedding. Um, I want photo and video, but 
because obviously all the photos that are on our Instagram at the moment is photos that I've taken and we're getting more shooters and stuff come on. So it'll, it'll grow in terms of like who shoots what, but also a lot of the video on there as well is like a lot of the reels and stuff that I take because to download the footage from the black magic, it's just a pain in the ass and Google Drive <laughs> sucks. Um, but so the back end of video is yeah. a lot, is a massive pain. But if someone came to me and was like, all right, like I want, we're going to have dual pixel. I want you to be there. And they go like, what am I, if I was going to get the most out of the team, like, what were you going to do? Like, well, what am I going to get the most out of if you're shooting? I'd say video for me personally. I, I could give you so much more as a videographer than a photographer. And that comes back to like 12 months of like, I started at like gun ho on photo and I was like, oh, video. Um, I'm happy to lead that to Geordie. And now it's like, I just want all, all video, all video, all the time. Like it's so much. It's a little bit easier. less stressful on it's us. A little bit less, yeah. And because you have more time well. because you, you can be constantly rolling, as I just mentioned. Like you can be constantly rolling and you know you're not going to miss anything. Um, whereas in terms of, you know, photography, there is that slight chance that you could potentially miss a moment yeah. and then that weighs on it. Yeah. Because I've done it. I've, d- I've done my own, probably two weddings of just photography and I personally don't like the stress that comes with it. Yeah. You might be different in terms of you've just adapted to it and you know mm-hmm. how to do it and there's better processes and all that sort of stuff. But yeah. the ones that I've done, uh, yeah. Okay, like just- I always thought I was missing, I missed something. Yeah. I feel like that's why if I do photos, like I'll take – I'll just spray and get a heap of photos because like, oh, I just want to make sure I have enough. Um, and there's obviously, for, and when I think about it, like I've done it properly for 12 months. So, you know, there's people out there that have done it for 10 years and they just know exactly what to do. So there is like that's a side of the aspect to Experience. it as well. Experience that comes with it. And you can be, like you can be 12 months in and still do a really, really good job. Um, and not saying like we do a better job than anybody else, but obviously we've got enough people that have booked in to go, okay, well, they at least trust us with what we're where we're at at the moment, but like you're still going to learn along the way. Um, but yeah, I just feel like for those people that just nail like those really really good industry photographers, like they they can translate like what what we could translate in video, they can do it in photos. But I can't do that now. But I feel like with video, like I could give you so much more. Um, and who knows, I might come back around again. Like I might shoot eighteen months of just video and be like, oh. I want to photos. I want to swing back. Like that's the beauty of what we do. Having both, you can go from one to the other, but you don't know. And it's like saying, "What gets the basic of the topic? What we're talking about is like you don't know it until you try it." Yeah. So, yeah, don't. And that's just that's just the creator space in general. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like we're always. I think we're always after that thing that brings us the most happiness and what we do for work. Yeah. Um. And you know, I think it's people always looking to try new things and um, you know, you might love video and then come back around to photos. Um, but I think in saying that with someone's wedding, like we're not saying photography is going to be dead in the water. Like oh, yeah, you're no. always going to need a photographer. It'll be it's the main just like thing. where's your importance in terms of budget going to potentially go. Yeah, it's true. Um, potentially down the line in four, five, six years. Like um, we just see the industry as a whole potentially moving to more priority a video because you can capture so much more. And I think it's the way it goes now. Like social media is all like – Instagram's dead Instagram's if going, you're a photographer. Yeah. Unless you are um, – there's a guy I started following in the States um, and he blew up as a photographer in yeah. a space at the moment. But his work is like – he's from he's from the States. So, he's, yeah, like I said, he's from America. Um, and they can blow up a little bit different because their scene is different to ours. But like you have to be a really, really – shooting different to get noticed as a – photographer but i think video it's a lot easier to blow up like that video that we had was just like an idea of the shot um and then what the shot looked like and we had i think our most views on tiktok had like 400 views we had like five followers and then it's been a month and we have like 600 followers and that video has like over half a million views so i think the way that social media is going like everyone's going on instagram tiktok and they're watching videos so they're going to want to See what themselves and yeah, like that's and, that's where everyone's drawn. And it's just to. like that movement of the image in its simplest yeah, exactly terms right. is capturing people's attention because everyone's scrolling. I remember seeing a statistic. It's like you scroll. I think it was like forty posts a minute or something. Like it's the average scroll time. Surprising. Like you're seeing forty pieces of content every minute that you're yeah. scrolling um, is like the average. And it's like if something doesn't grab your attention, you're not going to stop. 
Yeah. So in terms of our business advertising and, you know, where businesses are pushing, it's all video. But you mm. still need the photography aspect for yeah. certain things, whether it's, you know, website or, you know, for a couple, and it's, it's getting that, those photos printed. Yeah, that physical thing from your wedding because everything's so digital. It's good to be able – like you can't print a video. No. I saw something the other day where you can get a, a, an album that looks like a – it's got like a video but screen. It's got like a video it. screen in it. But like at the end of the day, like to be able to have something physical that can come from it is really good. But I think the way that everyone just watches video now, like it's all video based. I just think in the next few years video is just going to go through the roof and then the through level. the roof comes all the different styles. Like it'd be interesting yeah. to see how our style changes this year. Like because uh, I'm doing more of the video and I take that – creative director in quotation marks role <laughs> when it comes to the business. But like I want to almost completely flip our style of video on its head to a degree. Um, but I really want to tell more so, story for so people. basics of what we do. Basically but what the, we do. But like just the, adding more different aspects to it. Whether yeah. we've like they were just recently had a documentary to our, our packages to yeah. offer that more real time footage where we were, um, you know, we're, we're still shooting now. Like it's all, you know, just that kind of, slower motion it's mm. more of that really pleasing slower aesthetic that people kind of grab onto yeah um but Tell in saying that like styles are going to gonna adapt and you know it's it really does come down to potentially what the client likes as well like yeah. that's why we have our packages like we've got our basic ones but then there's this documentary one yeah which is kind of like a standout mm. and if someone does want that additional to everything else that they're going to get anyway because yeah. we'll still supply that slower motion one exactly and like right. that our, our style. It's just, it's just evolving with how everything's going. Like you, if you shoot one way for 10 years, like, like photography in the last, or weddings in the last, like say since COVID have changed dramatically, like let alone how people want them captured and how everything goes moving forward. So it's keeping like what's true to us with how we started, but then just building, building on it and always kind of evolving and, and keeping up, but keeping like, you know, our aspect of it as well. Like you don't want to completely change everything, no. but like just evolving with the times yep. and, and keeping up with everyone. Otherwise you, you know, you kind of you don't go backwards, but you just, you stagnate to a degree. Like you've yep. always got to be. Yeah. hundred percent. And I think with video, it has the most creative aspect to it because you can, you know, there's only one way, like when you've got the photo taken, mm. there is only so many ways you can edit that photo. Yeah. Um, whereas video, there's little, there's literally endless things that you can do mm. with that piece of video because yeah. it's rolling motion. Like you can slow it down, you can speed it up, you can flip it, you can do yeah, all these just, sort of things. You, you can add effects, you can yeah. add music, you can add audio on top of it. Like there's so many like different the, things to make the photo, it look different. Someone- you could give the same photo to like three different people and they could color grade it a different way. Completely change the color. But if you give someone the same set of 10 clips and say, make something around this, like it's going to be be edited completely different. Like it's going to look completely different. So I don't know. I think video is, video is big. It's a big thing for us. It's probably our main thing out of the two, but um, I think that's what will grow the most in terms of potential and this will, you know, depending on um, depending on how long, you know, it kind of, uh, you know, where the space kind of goes. But, um, yeah, I think video will grow in terms of its aspect, whereas mm. photography will stay, this is what you get on the day, this It'll, is how many hours you shoot, this is how many photographers you get. Mm. Whereas video, I think, is going to be ever-changing for at least a short period of time until yeah. – um, just to see where the technology goes, I guess. Like I think like going – like how much we've just reflected on that last 12 months, like how the next 12 months are going to go. Um, like we're already on track to probably do like – I reckon we'll do like 60 weddings this year. Yeah, probably so. Probably a good number. Like I think we've got – I think 40 this season but 60 next season. Is that correct? Or you're probably more across uh, the numbers than I am. More, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm more talking about like because the way we go about it is the season is like November till like May. May, yeah, like at twenty, say twenty twenty two November till twenty twenty three May. I'm just talking about like this year in general. Like yeah, so twenty twenty three. Yeah. I think we'll probably do 60, yeah. probably sixty, um, which is probably a good number for where we're at. But we, I think we, like from what we've been talking about, we really want to build like the team aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I have dual pixel as a team. 
um, and have people that shoot and think the same as like we do to come on board um, so we can shoot for more couples and obviously like weekend uh, weddings, a lot of weekend work and things like that. And um, so when it comes to like family life and spending time with our partners and, you know, just growing in that sense, like Mm -hmm. we want to make sure we're not working every single weekend. But I think like for how it's going to go for us the next 12 months, like I definitely think we want to work more into, I want to work more into like interstate weddings. Like I really want to see what, um, you know, shooting weddings. Yeah. So you get a taste for it. Cause like you might hate it, you might like it. Like travel is a whole different beast on its own. And then you've got equipment issues and how you deal with files and all sorts of stuff. Did a wedding in Port Douglas uh, last year, which was pretty cool. Like it just came about was um, friends of friends, got friends now, but at the time probably more friends of friends getting married in Port Douglas. They got pushed back three years because of COVID. Uh, we happened to be going for a holiday the same time that they were going to get married. Asked if they wanted to do video. They ended up deciding that they wanted to just change their photographer and switched across to using us instead of the one they'd originally booked. Um which doesn't really happen too often, but I think it was more the fact it's been three years and obviously a lot of changes in 12 months, let alone three years. So anyway, I went up and did that. And other than the fact that it was extremely hot <laughs> and humid. Um, Which I hate. <laughs> yeah. And I don't do Winter well any day. anymore now, but like, I think it's just shooting in a completely different environment. Like the feel of that wedding was different. Like it was a lot more, or well, the feel for that was a lot more relaxed purely because the couple were going interstate as well. But like, just seeing what else is out there, what else is normal in different states, like what their venues look like. Like me personally, like I love hills and all that sort of stuff. It's like Tasmania is somewhere I really want to shoot. But shooting on a tropical beach. Yeah, is exactly. Like, a very different thing. Exactly. Shooting the, you know, on the hills in the Yarra Valley, like mm. in terms of how you deal with the sun and the heat and Instead of shooting what the couple like a, feels like. Like a winery, like what's what shooting. What the couple's wearing. Like that yeah. one that you did, like they were really casual. Like you're talking yeah. like board shorts cotton shirt and she yeah. was just in a white dress or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so, so like a- it was more like, yeah, more just seeing how other places do weddings and learning in that aspect. Um, and, yeah, I think like so yeah, predicting like hopefully that, well, that's what we're pushing for, um, you know, plus building our team yeah. and really making Jewel Pixel more or less about us. Yeah. More about bringing other people in. Because I think there was two ways we could have gone with – the business, like mm. we could have just separated ourselves and just gone under our own name. Yeah. And it is easier to start off like that because you're building that personal brand. Mm. Um, you're just dealing with your name and people connect with you straight yeah, away. exactly. But what happens in three, four, five years if you go, I don't want to do photography anymore yeah. or I don't want to do videography it's anymore. All and it's all on that individual person. It's very hard for them to potentially pivot in different directions and actually build something because all yeah. the business is on them. And for some people that's fine. Mm. Um, and they do get a lot of work. Like some of the biggest photographers we know go under their personal name. Exactly. They, they know they're going to do that for a long period of time. But yeah. for us, we just got into weddings mm. um, and we were testing the waters. So we didn't want to basically just run under our own name in case we wanted to pivot in that first 12 months and yeah. go do something else. And we had weddings booked out for the next, you know, a wedding in two years of like, yeah. oh, I still have to go do that. Yeah. Whereas now, yes, we could go into our individual kind of um, lanes because we're pretty confident we want to do this for mm. a long period of time now. Um, but to start, we didn't want to do that. So, yeah. but now we've built up that business of, you know, being reliable, yeah. being that um, really um, reliable company that people do trust us now. And they still know us within the business. Like, yeah, yeah. And Riley, if you mentioned we'll, it, like, they we'll know always who we be are. around, whether it's like, People might know me as a photographer and I switched to video. People might know you as a videographer and now you're like, you know, you take all the meetings with couples and you sort everything out for their timelines. Like it's, I feel like it's a very, it can be a very like uh, stressful business to run. Like you basically, you constantly, you just customer service 24 seven. Yep. All um, the time. And yeah. it's mainly during the season, unfortunately. Like it all happens during that October to May, like you are literally, that is when people are inquiring and that's when you're shooting. Yeah. The winter is quite off. <laughs> yeah, it's quite, <laughs> that is which like is good. the like off that. season of what we do, but we still get inquiries and yeah. stuff and you're still dealing with, you know, potential couples going into their September wedding yeah. or whatever. But it's, it literally all happens. Just like even now, like you've dealt with two or three leads over the last day, mm. like just trying to get back to them. Like all our pricing's on our website now. So it's really easy. So the leads that we do get, 
know what yeah. they want. Yeah. But we're still having to contact them and still you know, find out what they want and, because like at the end of the day, it comes down to client experience. Mm. And like the way I kind of explain it to mates and my like little mates that are trades and, um, you know, there's known but one other mate that's starting photography, um, but not a lot of like other wedding people. Um, it's hard for them to understand, but I think like the way I speak, explain it to my mates that are trades, it's like, oh, so you got one, you got one client that like you hear from all the time, like is really involved in their build. And it can get to a point where it, like on that side, it's come from that building background, it can get annoying. It's like, well, think of that, but times it by like 50 to 60 people. Yep. And that's what it's like dealing, like having wedding couples all the time. Yep. And obviously that's a massive part of it. And it, it's not like. And they're stressed. Our clients are stressed exactly like, you know, building yeah. clients are like they are trying to organize vendors. They're having issues. Yeah. Who's available? Who's not available? They've probably, you know, even though they've inquired with us, they've probably inquired with a couple Others of other as vendors well. as well. Like yeah. they're having to deal and they're trying to find who's right for them. Mm. Um, and that's a big reason for this podcast is how can we um, make it more personal and like you get to know us yeah. as much as you can so you can make a really informed decision um, and you actually get to see us personally rather yeah. than hiring a oh, glitzy glamour photographer or videographer and then mm. they rock up on your day and they don't get your vibe. Yeah, because we've had a few that we've worked with and they've gone like, oh, their work's really good but their personalities don't mix with the couple, right? I think we like we have Zoom meetings with all of our couples and or try to have a Zoom meeting with all our couples before they book. Yep. Um, some of them are just like happy to book straight off seeing the work. Um, they might have seen us at other weddings or know us from somewhere, whatever it might be, but we try and have chats with them beforehand um, and make sure that we kind of fit each other's vibe. And I say to all of them, like, just because we have a meeting, like don't feel obligated, like you have to book. Like if you don't feel like we're fitting, then it's going to, you don't have to worry about that on the day. Like, oh, I don't know how they, if we're going to get along. And two, like we don't have to stress about that as well. Like mm. we don't want to run around all day with people that we're awkward with. Yeah. Like the, like we want to have fun. Doesn't feel like, exactly right. We want to have fun and that doesn't sound like fun. And so. that comes down to our whole vibe and, um, you know, if that's the type of client we're trying to attract, like that fun, young, mm. well, they wouldn't even say young because we've dealt with, and we're like, we say we're young, like, what are you? 25. Yeah, I'm 27. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you've got, you know, I say older couples that might be in like their late 30s or mm. even into their 40s who have shot or even like, You've had like someone in your fifties, mm. like um, that was they are too. the really fun couples yeah. to shoot with, and it's just like that vibe match. Yeah, like we're just going like our advertising is all towards these couples that really want to have a fun time. We're laid back. We're not going to make it stressful for mm. you. We're not going to interfere with anyone else on the day as much as we can. Like yeah. we're going to make it a really really pleasant experience for everyone. So we try and like- basically come out of it as your friend that you can contact us whether it's two, three years down the road and be like, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. is Riley and Geordie's number, like if you ever want to deal with them in terms of whatever yeah, or anything that comes out of it like that, like just as a network connection or anything, it's not like, oh, these guys were great. They shot a really great video, took really awesome photos, but their personality just wasn't quite there. It wasn't, didn't match. And that's what you want to do. You just want to match with your couples and you want to make sure that you have a good, just a good day in general. Like you like you said, you don't want to give them good stuff, but then all they, like they might have these photos and stuff that's amazing and videos that's amazing and they can appreciate that, but might, they might just go like, just wasn't. But you're remembering the, the wrong things yeah, you, on the day. Yeah, you're still going to have that, that stigma still going to stick in their head of like, oh, they didn't chat too much. Yeah. They kind or of just, nans or mums still mentioning or oh, how bad they acted on the day or yeah. they weren't social or the, you know, the few things that they said on the day just a little bit inappropriate or whatever it is. Like it's just, just like, couldn't read the room. Like yeah, there's so many different things that go. Yeah. And it comes but. down to the experience. And I think it's about 50, maybe 60, 40, like 60% quality of product. And then, yeah. you know, that 40, other 40% is how well you interact with the person that you're with. Cause at the end of the day, like we are the vendor that's there for the longest duration yeah. of the day. Like exactly. Your, your hair and makeup artist is only going to be there for a couple of hours and you're only at the venue for a couple of hours and your DJ is only there for a couple of hours mm. and your celebrant's only there with for you for hour. 45 minutes. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, we're there for potentially 8, 10, 12, 14 hours. Mm. And it's like, would you want to be with someone that you don't, don't like. get along with? Yeah. Or would you rather be with someone that's really easy to get along with yeah. and you can talk about kind of anything? And we, we can find, and I think we know with the couples that like we, we pretty well gel with all the couples that we have, but I think you can find with the ones that are, 
that you know you're doing a good job as a vendor is when you're talking to the couples just casually about nothing wedding related at the mm. end of the day. And they'll sometimes they'll almost forget that that's who you are and they'll go, oh. It's oh, just a normal just, everyday yeah, person. Like they're, I know they're here to like shoot my wedding in this sense, but, you know, I've had um, – there was one wedding where uh, like because we, we put a lot in and I, I try and put as much in as I can. Like I don't want to miss anything for anyone. Um, but I had I remember there was one. We went and did their portrait session. We came back, put our cameras away, and I just went up, going up to the bar to get some water and the groom was there and he's like, oh, because it was hot as well. And he's like, um, do you want a beer? And I was like, yeah, if you're offering, I have a beer. And then he basically has a beer and he just turns around and he's just like, cheers, like appreciate you, appreciate your work today. And she cheers glasses and then we just walked away. It's like so simple. Like he might have not even thought about it. Yep. But to, to me as a shooter, it's like, oh, well, or as a – I've obviously done something I've right. I've done something right to know that like I've had two meetings with these people, probably spoken to them It's not just a, a business of, transaction. Exactly. You know, spoken to them for maybe an hour and a half in total before the day and we can rock up on the day and by the end of it, you know, he's like – you want a beer? Cheers. Thanks for your work. Yeah, I could text him tomorrow about anything and you'd probably be best mates. Like yeah, top thing. Yeah, that, that's the kind of vibe that you want to have. And we don't, it's not like that with every person. No. Like, because some people just, that's, that's some, just, some, like some so couples do treat person. it as like they are just the supplier and that's fine. Like, yeah. like that's going to happen. But the way we just hope that every couple perceives us as we're just normal everyday people. Yeah. Um, and you can just chat to us about anything. And, and the day is not just all about, you know, what, where are we going next? It's like, you can just like chill out for a minute and chat about, you know, how are your kids doing or um, anything like that? Cause mo- mo- there's a lot of couples that we have that do have young children and, mm. you know, we might just focus a little bit just on them and ask about how they're yeah. dealing with the day or, yeah. um, you know, just family with them or what are they or watching or on the iPad or whatever yeah. it is. It's like really gelling with everyone as a whole yeah. Um, and trying to be as fun as possible because at yeah. the end of the day, like it is a stressful day as I know. And it's like as the more fun you can make it, the better. Exactly. So, um, yeah, mean? I think uh, it's been a pretty long podcast. Yeah. I think we might. <laughs> Listen all <laughs> the way to the end. Cheers. <laughs> yeah. We're out of rambling. Cheers but- for listening all the way to the end. We honestly thought this was going to go for 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, so we're like, oh, yeah. third, first podcast. We'll see how it goes. But, um, yeah, I think it just shows – I think to us now that there's quite a, there's quite a few things we, we can ramble on about. Mm. So there's obviously going to be future episodes. Definitely. So, um, yeah, well, anyway, that's kind of our, how we got started. I'm sure we'll delve more into things, the intricacies of how we've, you know, how our business runs and all that sort of stuff and well into the future and all those sort of things. And, how, and yeah, just everything, even personal life and stuff, mm. like, which most people only find out if they, they get us on the day, like who's yeah. our partners and all that sort of stuff, you know, where we live and all this sort of thing. But yeah, um, yeah I think it's been, it's been quite good. a good, what, three, four, five years now. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we're just getting started, I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're just yeah. getting started compared to when we started. So um, yeah, we hope everyone likes this uh this first episode and make sure we'll, uh, you uh, make sure you subscribe on whatever streaming platform you're on with that leave Apple us a podcast. rating if you could if you leave stars, us a review that'd be good so we can reach uh reach some more reach people a few more people and um, if you got any guests that you would potentially like to see on the podcast let yeah, us reach know out. reach out and any if there's anything you want to hear about as well that that really makes it informative for us and we at least don't think we're going to put something out that people don't want and if we hear it from you guys um just reach out and we, we'll get We'll try and create an episode around it. Yeah. So, yeah. no, thanks for listening, and we'll uh, we'll see you on the next one. That's it. See you. Cool. See you guys. Bye.